I remember the decade of the 70s. We dealt with it by inflating away the purchasing power of the instrument that the debt was denominated in. Over the course of the decade of the 1980s, the purchasing power, constant purchasing power of the U.S. dollar declined by 80%. I think that that sort of thing is precisely what's on offer now. If that's right, uh, and I believe it's right, if that's right, you could be talking about a gold price that was $7,000 or $8,000 or $9,000 or $10,000. Am I saying gold is going to go to $10,000? No, but I'm saying that there is a strong enough possibility of it. So I think that people who are concerned about those things need to own gold. And I think that, that message circulates well. And I think for better or worse, the gold price goes higher and perhaps much higher. With a distinguished career spanning decades, Rick Rule compares current economic conditions to the 1970s, envisioning a potential devaluation of the U.S. dollar that could significantly elevate the price of gold. From Rick Rule's unique perspective, the recent rise in gold prices is driven by foreign central banks reacting to what he perceives as U.S. attempts to weaponize the dollar. Despite the Federal Reserve's initiation of interest rate hikes in March 2022, gold prices have surged by 22%. As sanctions escalate, Central banks of countries opposed to the U.S. are buying more gold to diversify from the U.S. dollar. Limited gold supply due to stagnant production is also fueling this trend. Central banks now purchase the highest amount of gold since records began in 1950, constituting 33% of monthly global demand. According to Bloomberg, China has added to its gold coffers for 16 months in a row. Its central bank relentlessly diversifies its reserves into gold and out of the U.S. dollar. In February alone, the PBRC added 390,000 troy ounces of gold. It holds 73 million troy ounces, or 2,257 tons of gold. Of that amount, the central bank bought 1,034 tons just in 2003. Considering Rick Rule's viewpoint, he highlights China's promotion of gold as a savings avenue, contrasting it with retail buying patterns in the U.S. He also notes gold's impressive performance, particularly when assessed in renminbi, However, Rule anticipates that recent U.S. policies have left foreign central banks questioning their heavy dependence on the dollar and U.S. Treasury securities. This is evidenced by China's reduction of U.S. Treasury bond holdings to $775 billion, reflecting a broader trend of selling off 40% of its U.S. Treasury holdings over the past decade. Concurrently, Rick implies that this discomfort is steering them towards exploring alternative assets, with gold poised to reap significant benefits. Now, we present the clips of Rick Rule's insights from his recent interview with ITM Trading Incorporated. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. The statistics would seem to indicate that the recent strength in gold, and by recent I mean the last two years, has been more a function of central bank buying than retail buying, even in China. The Chinese market, and to a lesser extent the Indian market, uh, has seen more retail buying than the U.S. market, which has in fact seen retail selling. But the statistics would suggest that the buyers of gold in real size have been foreign central banks reacting, uh, I suspect, by the U.S. government's attempt to weaponize the U.S. dollar, whether it is seizing $300 billion worth of Russian holdings of U.S. Treasury securities, which should make any country that holds its wealth in U.S. Treasuries concerned, uh, or the weaponization of the, of, of the SWIFT banking system by the U.S. Uh, to reinforce sanctions. Whether or not, as an American, you agree with those policies or not, they're disquieting uh, to foreign central banks who have suddenly come to understand that denominating all of their foreign currency transactions and their national savings in U.S. dollars and U.S. Treasury securities is not a good thing. Um, with regards to the difference between Chinese buying, that is Chinese retail buying, uh, and U.S. retail buying, the Chinese government has an official policy of encouraging their savers to save, uh, among other things, in gold. Uh, which is to say that they have facilitated gold transactions and encouraged it after, uh, you know, a policy many years ago of making it illegal. So there's probably an awful lot of pent-up demand in China, which is also facilitated by the Chinese government. 
And as you say, the weakness uh, in the Remnimbi has meant that uh, while gold has done well in U.S. dollars, it's done very, very, very well. Gold has traditionally been both a store of value and a medium of exchange. That's important to understand. While it doesn't provide a yield like U.S. Treasuries uh, in terms of being a savings instrument for the Chinese central bank, uh, it provides them more security of principle than other currencies of trading partners that they may have, the Russians as an example, or the Chinese. So gold is, I think, for the Chinese central banks and for many other central banks, uh, fulfilling its traditional role, both as a medium of exchange uh, and as a store of value. Imagine if you were the Chinese uh, and you ended up with several trillion rubles. It, it was efficacious for them to denominate their trade in U.S. dollars. They did it, and they did it comfortably for years, and they were for years the largest holders of U.S. treasuries. The relationship between the U.S. government and the Chinese government now probably leaves the Chinese no choice but to reduce their mm -hmm. holdings of U.S. treasuries and substitute gold for that asset class. I have seen by the World Gold Council suggests that in constant dollars, that gold would have to break out above 2,700 to get to new real highs. It's interesting that when people talk about money, they don't talk about money in terms of the constant. Uh, and when you talk about gold, you are talking about the constant. So my suggestion would be uh, for gold to take out the old highs, which I think it will do, uh, it would have to go through 2,700. But your bigger point is more important. For me, gold isn't a trading vehicle. Uh, for me, gold is a store of wealth, a medium of exchange, liquidity, <laughs> uh, and insurance. And I own gold because I'm afraid of our incomprehensible debt levels. Regarding silver stocks, Rick Rule anticipates a potential capital influx into the space. Reflecting on past market movements, he recalls the dramatic rise of silver prices in the 1990s, and expresses a desire to participate in similar scenarios if they occur again. Silver miners don't expect any growth in the supply of mined silver for years. Mine supply peaked at around 900 million ounces in 2016, then gradually fell to the current roughly 800 million ounces, and it's likely to stay there for some time going forward. However, amidst this backdrop, First Majestic Silver is an intriguing silver miner that's been heating up this year, with the stock up an impressive 30% year-to-date. Moving ahead, the nearly $3 billion miner could have legs as it looks to move toward its 2021 all-time highs. While shifting focus to the next aspect, Rick predicts a reluctance from both Democrats and Republicans to cut current spending. He foresees this leading to the devaluation of the U.S. dollar, consequently affecting savings products down the line. Let's get back to the interview. What I told people about silver was that traditionally silver followed gold, that gold need to move, that the... the the narrative needed to be established by gold and then silver would follow through. What I tried to say in the interviews that I think you're referring to were that the silver stocks were truly a coiled spring. Mm. Uh, there was so much hate around the silver stocks, uh, probably as a consequence of their fail during the 2020 and 2021 silver squeeze. Uh, and silver and the silver stocks certainly built up a lot of jilted lovers, uh, young jilted lovers. Uh, particularly passionate ones in 2020 and 2021. The consequence of that is that the silver stocks got way, way oversold. Uh, in my career, uh, that's happened three times before, uh, and I'd adore to see it happen again. Uh, I own gold or physical bullion, I guess, as insurance. I own the silver stocks as a speculator and, and describing them as coiled springs, uh, I think is really accurate. There is not enough market cap uh, in the legitimate silver stock space to handle the capital that will come into the space if the generalist investor buys into that narrative. I I've seen that happen before. Uh, I remember the early part of the decade of the 90s, that move in silver, when things like Pan American silver went from 50 cents to $45, silver standard from 72 cents to $45. I'm not saying it's going to happen again. But I'd sure like to be part of it if it does. I don't see the Democrats uh, having any interest in reducing current spending. And I don't see the Republicans having any interest in reducing current spending. The Republicans might be in favor of a tax cut, but a tax cut without a spending cut 
is only a tax deferral. <laughs> you have to borrow it or you have to print. I think it's absolutely inescapable that to the extent that we build up more US dollar obligations, the only way we finance our way out of it is to devalue the US dollar. And we're, we're not devaluing the US dollar against other currencies because they're doing the same thing. I don't know the quantum, but I do remember in the decade of the 80s, the decade of the 70s, pardon me, that uh, if you go from 1970 to 1980, the constant purchasing power of the US dollar declined by 80%. And I suspect that that's what's going to happen to the holders of U.S. dollar denominated savings products in the next 10 or 15 years. The allure of gold has been further enhanced by a weakening dollar and diminishing treasury yields, rendering it more appealing to international investors. However, the short term trajectory of gold remains intricately intertwined with expectations surrounding interest rates as central banks increasingly turn to gold and reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar. How might this reshape individual investor strategies? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.